Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing well. It was about a couple weeks ago and I made this self-portrait, this contact print from a paper negative. Both of them were exposed and processed in my Afghan box camera, what I'm starting to call a dark box camera. And since I made the last update for you guys, I've made a few changes to the camera and I haven't really tested out uh, the camera yet with all the new changes. So first of all, let's go in and look at the changes and then we'll go set up for a, a self-portrait session. Well, let's start in the back here. So the old focus rod was too long and so I've made a custom length focus rod made from two pieces of quarter inch brass tubing with a 7 16 uh, sleeve on the inside and then it was soldered together. I had to use 12 inch long pieces of brass tubing but it got me to where I have a custom size focus rod. I have a brass nut that is soldered to the end of the focus rod and it is a 1024 thread. In the back here I have a 1024 machine screw that I cut the head off and I soldered it inside the brass tube and then of course this this uh, knob here threads onto it like that. Uh, one of the main changes though, the real change that I wanted to do is to improve the film gate area. And it's significantly different than what it was the last time you saw this. So what I had before was this focusing screen was taped to the bottom of the film gate with a long kind of loopy section of gaffers tape. And I didn't like the way it didn't close properly and it was hard to operate single-handedly. Also, I only had about an eighth of an inch border along the edge of the film gate and sometimes the paper, when you push it in there, it would curl and pop through and it wouldn't stay put. So uh, w the first change was I put this quarter inch thick film gate made from sheet copper and it's glued in place. So I have a little bit wider border on the edge of the picture but it also means it's more secure. Uh, for putting the prints in. And then I got rid of the hinged view screen and I have this wooden frame here. And the wooden frame has some holes and it's secured or can be secured by two uh, thumb screws on these machine screws, which is a nice change. Then uh, I can now use a removable focusing screen. I, I can simply set it in there, close it up, focus the camera, preset my focus distance with this clip here. Then I can open the film gate, take out the focus screen, set it aside here, and in its place I have a sheet of glass that I can use for sandwiching the paper negative into the film gate like this and closing it up for shooting the paper negative. And then for printing uh, the paper negative, I will put the plate of glass in the front and I will sandwich my negative with the print paper face to face, the negative in the front. That'll close up, that'll get secured with a thumb screw and that'll get pulled back to the printing position back here. And then I will use my contact printing light source which flips up like this and there is a switch on the top of the box that turns on and that reveals the printing light for contact printing. I also have a safety uh, thing that keeps the switch from being accidentally hit and draining the batteries. Because I wanted to be able to make this thing repairable, I also, this tape hinge is several layers of gaffers tape, like three or four layers. So I have these thin pieces of wood that are screwed down and these hold that tape in place. There's one on the bottom as well that you probably can't see, but these are removable in case the tape hinge starts to tear. I can simply unscrew these and I can replace it with new tape hinge. So it's, it's a serviceable. But since the bottom of this film gate hangs down lower, it means that the film gate would hit the developer tray. It wouldn't be able to go any further past it. So what I had to do is figure out a way to get more room and what I did here is instead of having the developer tray and the fixer trays next to each other, I elevated the fixer tray on a piece of wood and this is uh, velcroed in place so I can just pull it off and 
it goes back in the corner here nicely, and then I can tuck the developer tray partly underneath the fixed tray, and I gain about another inch and a quarter space or whatever back here, and still gives me plenty of room to operate and to get the, the negative in the print into the developer. I also uh, taped up the edges uh, and the sides just to uh, slow down the corrosion from chemicals getting on the copper sheet, but uh, that's more of a temporary expediency. Okay, so I'm setting up in a different part of my yard this morning than I was when I did the last series of tests. Um, I really like to shoot this in the shade. So basically bright daylight, but in the shade. And I think it gives the best contrast, I think, for uh, portraits. So anyways, I'm setting up here and I have to um, get myself focused. Uh, so what I'm using is I have a focus target that is set up to roughly the same length that I used last time. And I'm going to tape that focus target to the end of a yardstick. And I'm going to then stretch out the string. And looking through the back of the camera, I can focus on the target and get my focus set. So my focus point has been preset with that red bulldog clip. Well, I have more developer than I need volume-wise. But I'm pouring. So it's about a third to a half full, something like that. All right. Okay. Close the door. Make sure the focusing rod's pulled out. Now I need to meter myself. Okay, so in shade, I've learned to give it a lower ISO, so basically expose it more. This is grade two RC paper, so ISO six, uh, incident, actually reflected metering, right off my face. And I'm gonna be roughly this far away, so take a meter reading. So at F5.6 is about a sixth of a second, which I'm gonna call it F7 at a quarter. And about F7 there at a quarter second. All right, cock the shutter. Get this focusing string. Get myself composed. All right. Now we get to process it and see what we get. All right, let's see what it looks like. Oh, yes. I exposed it at F8 for a quarter of a second instead of F7-ish. Looks like my composition, it's a little low. I would like it a little bit higher. Focus is good. Wish I had composed my face a little higher, but that's something I'll have to adjust for. Okay, well I have my solar powered drawing box here. Okay, so the solar powered box, about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So that ought to be hot enough. Okay, so I have my film squeegee. Try to get off the majority of the water. So it looks like the whole process is fairly easy now. Handling the paper with one hand, in and out of the film gate, in and out of the paper safe, etc. It seems like it works really good. The next challenge, of course, will be trying to do a print, a uh, contact print in the camera. That'll be a little trickier because I have to um, handle two pieces of paper in a sandwich in the right orientation and get them behind the piece of glass without smudging the piece of glass too badly with my fingerprints. Well, it looks like my film drying box is starting to fog up nicely from the hot sun. Let's see here. That's not too bad. I can still see detail in the bright part of my face. It looks like I caught focus mainly on my nose and my beard and mustache. My eyes might be a little soft. We'll see. 
I was using f8 for an aperture, so I have a little bit more depth of focus than I normally would at f5.6. I like the way that my shirt collar goes out of focus and my ear goes out of focus. So hopefully we'll see what happens. We try to print this. And it looks like I'm going to have to clean this glass before I use it for my contact print. It's pretty smudged up. Okay, so my print position, I want to pull back the film gate all the way to roughly here. Uh, so I'm going to have to take the clip off my focusing clip. Which means the next time I make a portrait, I'll have to refocus. But that's probably the normal. So right about here is my print position. I do want to flip up this when I get ready. But in the meantime, I have to load the two pieces behind the piece of glass that's already in here. Okay, let's see how this print came out. I did six seconds. It looks pretty good. I think the border looks pretty sharp from what I can tell. No other real artifacts. It looks promising. All right. I think that's a pretty good print. That looks pretty good. Well, this was a pretty satisfying little project today. I came up with at least one pretty darn good print, I thought. And I think that's pretty much all that I could have asked for in this little box camera. Not really that big, but being able to get these 4x6 prints, that's pretty neat. Well, I'm continuing to work on this project and making continuous improvements as I go step by step. It's an iterative process, I think. Um, it's not like you draw out a finished camera ahead of time and then make it. It's You don't know what the process is, really, the details of it, until you build a prototype. And then you work with it and you decide there's improvements to be made and you kind of iteratively make those improvements and test it and repeat ad infinitum it seems like but you get to a point where hey that's pretty neat you know and so there's still some issues i have to deal with uh, i would like to start using multi-grade paper with contrast filters for the printing so i need to build a second paper safe my first paper safe the gaffers tape i bought on Amazon is substandard quality, so I'm going to have to buy some new gaffers tape, put together two new paper safes, and then do some calibration tests with multi-grade paper for printing. But this is pretty darn good. I'm happy with it. Well, if you're finding yourselves at home feeling like you need to do something creative, I'd advise you to start working on one of those projects that you've been thinking about for so long, like, in my case, this project here. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions, comments, drop them down below. I'd be happy to answer your questions. And until next time, stay creative, stay safe. Have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.